Hi friends, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and today I'm going to be playing the game of a bookish life which is one of my favorite videos to make every month. You know we're in trouble if editing Amy is already showing up, right? <laughs> uh, hopefully the rest of my film footage isn't so rambly and awful but I'm kind of filming last minute because I'm going away again this weekend and I need to get this TBR video done and up. That's why I don't look uh, in the video. I don't wear makeup or anything like that. I'm just like, I gotta get things done. So one of the things that I was trying to explain here that didn't go over very well was that I am going to be not taking any punishments in September. It doesn't mean I won't take punishments for roles from August, it just means that I'm pushing them forward to October. And this might be something I do in the future because I, I keep reading all the way up to the end of the month and I don't like taking punishments for things that I may end up reading. And so I don't really like spinning right at the last minute and the end of the month. Plus it doesn't give me a lot of time to edit. So I spun earlier this month and I didn't take any punishments because I didn't know what books I would actually get to. So come my September TBR, I will actually know how many books I didn't either read from August or roll over from August. Then I can take punishments in October for those books. So I like to be able to roll earlier in the month and then plan out my TBR. And I'm gonna continue doing that. So it just means that I'm still gonna take punishments, but they're gonna be kind of a month off. And it'll all work out. It's not a big deal. Also, if you're new to my TBR game, welcome. I'm glad you're here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun. I will put a playlist up here and down below. If you wanna know about the rules, there's extensive rules. If you wanna know about the rules, go ahead and check out my January video. So let's do a recap of the roles that I had last month and where I'm at with these books. The first one was YA Other by a New Tome. This was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I have not started this. This is probably the one that I end up putting back on my shelf and not rolling over. So there's a very good chance that I'll have one penalty in October. Next, we've got YA Other book about love, romance, or a prominent relationship. And for this one, I went with Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This is the Lunar Along pick. I've made it about halfway through. I will definitely get this one finished. And also the Lunar Along live show where we're discussing Cinder is gonna take place on September. September 3rd, which is a Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You'll have a little bit extra time to finish this book if you haven't quite finished it by then. I will definitely have it done. It's a very quick read. And I will make sure I set up that live show in advance so you can set a reminder for yourself. So keep an eye out for that. Danielle and I are gonna be having fun talking about Cinder. I'm sure we'll have a lot of great things to discuss. Spin number three was YA Other, Book with a Complicated Relationship. And for that, I picked Heartstrings and Other Breakable Things by Jacqueline Ferkins. And this one I haven't started yet. I, this is a Mansfield Park retelling. So this is part of the Down Memory Jane read along. And I have really done a good job about reading all those books this year. And so I really do hope that I get to this one. If I don't, I will take a penalty for it. If I decide that I shouldn't be so hard on myself for missing one of the Down Memory Jane read-along books, then you might see two penalties in October. Spin number four was adult horror thriller mystery, book I own. And for this one, I went with The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe. And I'm about 3% into this. I need to do some catching up on this. So hopefully this week I'll get a chance to catch up, maybe on the airplane to my trip this weekend because I'm out of town again. And uh, we'll see. I haven't had a chance to pick it up much. Although this does not need to be finished till the end of September, but I do want to get to the point where I'm supposed to be at to be able to talk about it with Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot and Bethann Bernega Sokolar. Spin number five, I went with one word title and that is Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. I'm listening to this on audiobook. I'm about 60% of the way through. So I will definitely get that one finished soon. Spin number six is adult sci-fi, which was Do Androids Room of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. I have finished this one. So, hey, there's one book on my 11 books from August that I have finished. Fantastic. <laughs> Spin number seven was adult fantasy book I own. I need to read Mad Ship by Robin Hobb, which is the second book in the Live Ship Traders. I am so excited about reading this. I just know that it's a doozy and I'm already working on quite a few doozies at the moment. So luckily Magda Shell and I have agreed that we can split these Robin Hobb books up among two months. So I'll probably read most of this next month, but it will be carried over. So hopefully I'll start it this month, but if anything, I will be definitely reading it next month. Spin number eight was LGBTQ plus representation. And for this, I'm reading The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. I'm only about 20% of the way into this. I'm buddy reading this with Liz from For Booking Out Loud 
crowd. And I know that both of us are behind right now. So we're not pushing it too hard. These ones read fairly quickly. So I'm hoping to make a good dent on this soon. After the mysteries of Udolfo, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Next was Book with Transportation on the cover. And for that one, I went with Maiden Voyages by Sean Evans. This is a nonfiction book that I had planned on reading last month. I rolled it over to this month. I've read maybe a few pages of it. And I still plan on reading it, but I haven't really got much of a ways into it yet. So that one is a rollover. Book number 10 was a book with a beautiful cover. And for this one, I went with the Antelope Wife by Louise Erdrich. I have this copy here, but I like this copy better. I think it's a really beautiful copy. And so I have not had a chance to start this. This is for my Trash My TBR challenge thing that I've been doing. And so I do have to read this by the end of September. So I do plan on rolling this one over. And if I don't read it, then it has to be deleted off my TBR list. And then I just don't think about it anymore, but I'm hoping to read it next month. Finally, spin number 11 was a my choice book, and I chose The Lost City of Z by David Graham because this is my nonfiction pick for my nonfiction book club, and I haven't started this yet. I actually want to listen to this one on audiobook, and right now I'm listening to Catch-22, so once Catch-22 is finished, I'll pick this audiobook up and get through that one. And so that's all the books from last month's TBR video. It was pretty hectic. I have a lot going on book-wise right now, so if you want to know more about what I'm currently reading, what's going on, check out my Sunday sum ups. I wasn't able to have one last Sunday, but I'm trying to get one out this Sunday. But like I said, I'm out of town again. So it just depends on what I'm able to accomplish this week. So before I go into the spins, let's see what my tallies are looking like. I am in trouble if I hit a three or an eight, possibly if I roll on a one. Now I will say I'm implementing a new rule. What I've decided to do because last month was a bit ridiculous. I got a couple of really good suggestions down in the uh, comment section. And what I'm going to go with is this. Whenever I land on a my choice, I get to clear out one of my tallies, meaning like I can decide that I can clear out all the tallies on number three. I can decide that I will clear out all the tallies on number one. It'll depend on where I'm at with my tallies once I get to that my choice. But every single time I land on a my choice, I will have the opportunity to clear out my tallies for one number. So it's not going to be all my tallies. I think this sounds like a great idea for helping me out a little bit, but also not just making it too easy. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see how that goes. Spin number one. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's animal on the cover or in the title with Europe or Australian rep. All right, so spin number one, starting out well. <laughs> Not adding a book yet. <laughs> this is animal on the cover and it has to have Europe or Australian rep. So the last time I won this game, I went with Library Recommends and I was kind of like on my library website looking to see what kind of things they offer for library recommends. There's this one option you can do where you set it up so quarterly they'll send you a book based off whatever your specifications are. I just wanted them to send me a random book and see what they decided to send me. And so that will happen every quarter I think for me. I think it's every quarter. And so I finally got my first book and it was really cute because it's my surprise selection and it's like, enjoy from Liz. So Liz picks out my surprise selection and Liz chose for me Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And so it's really cute because she also put a little bookmark in here that tells me why she picked it. So the reason it was chosen for me is to enjoy your escape into a fantasy world inspired by Polish folklore. So what's interesting about this is that I'm Polish. My dad is 100% Polish, I'm half Polish. And my last name is definitely very Polish. And so I'm curious if the librarian, given that I didn't give them any suggestions, like, please give me this kind of book, please give me that kind of book. I gave them no specifications. I wonder if she's like, oh, well, her last name's Polish. Let me give her a book about Polish folklore. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it's kind of cute. And then it also tells you other books you might like, which has The Bear and the Nightingale on here, which I have read before, and The Once and Future Witches by Alexi Hara, which I do want to read. So I think this is really cute, and I'm excited to see what the library recommended for me. And so the 
reason I picked this for this prompt is because it has an animal on the cover. There's a hawk right here. And because this is based off Polish folklore, which is a European country. And the main character in this is Agnieszka, and that is a very Polish name. So I am guessing this is set in Poland or at least a world like Poland. So this is about this really small village where they live close to the woods. And in the woods, there's this wizard that is called the dragon. And the dragon requires sort of like a tribute of a young, beautiful, lovely maiden from the village to be sent to him every 10 years, I think it is. And Agnieszka's not those things. So she knows it's not gonna be her, it's gonna be her best friend, Kasia, that the dragon is going to choose. So she's, you know, trying really hard to figure out what she can do to save her friend, Kasia. And as the story goes along, things don't exactly turn out the way she was expecting them to. Spin number two, this way. 10. We're definitely safe on 10 because we hit all those last time. Okay, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's see, one through five to go this way, six through 10 to go that way. Okay, we're going to the right. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh no, <laughs> it's happening again, <laughs> plus one book. Oldest book on my TBR. Hmm. And the diversity rep is US person of color rep. All right, we're already adding another book to my TBR. So I've got six books at this point. And this next prompt was oldest book on my TBR. And it has to have US person of color representation or author. That's kind of how I'm thinking about this prompt. Also, as far as the oldest book on my TBR, the way I was thinking about that, it's not necessarily the book that I've had on there the longest, it's the oldest book, meaning when it was published. And so what I ended up doing is that I sorted all my books on my Goodreads TBR by the publication date. And I started the oldest books on there and looked for books that were written by a US person of color. And I actually didn't have to go very far down the list. I was surprised. But what I did end up with was 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. And this is one that I had planned on reading this past December. I did want to read it for my 12 Days of Christmas Carol Advent Calendar Challenge, but I didn't land on it. But it was still one that I was really interested in reading. So I kept it on my TBR. And I'm excited that I get to pick it up now. So this is a memoir from 1853, and it's about Solomon Northup. He was born a free man in New York, and at one point he kind of gets lured down to Washington, D.C. under false pretenses. And when he gets down there, he gets kidnapped and he's brought to the Deep South. He's put into slavery for 12 years. And I'm not really sure, was he able to escape? I don't remember. I'm sure it's somewhere, but I will find out when I read this. And so of course this sounds like a really difficult story, but I think that I'm going to really enjoy it. I enjoy hard hitting books like this. And I've never actually watched the movie either. So that's definitely something I'll be able to do is watch the movie after I've read this. I've got a lot of like adaptations I need to watch. <laughs> There's just never enough time in the day. So let's see what we're gonna have with spin number three. One. Oof, we're safe with one, but if I hit one again, I could be in trouble. So this is one, my choice, middle grade, my choice. All right, so spin number three was perfect because it was middle grade, my choice. And it's even better because I'm getting to wipe clean one of my tallies. So I decided to go with eight. Mom said, do eight, because you always land on eight. <laughs> so I did, I erased eight. So for this one, I'm implementing my TBR rule where if I have a book on my current TBR that I need to get in and it doesn't fit for both prompts, I can use it for just one of the prompts. So for this one, I'm gonna go with the prompt, my choice only, and I'm picking Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. And this is actually two authors that are writing together to make this whole Expanse series. It's adult sci-fi. I don't know why I'm so excited about this series. I have been intrigued ever since I heard about it. And actually probably mostly because the cover, for some reason, it's not like the most beautiful cover or anything, but the cover excites me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't get it, but I've heard great things about this series. And so I'm hoping that I feel the same way. So this is about a man named Jim Holden and his crew and they are ice miners and they, I think do shipments or something between different colonies like on, I think there's a uh, Mars and all these other different colonies that they go from place to place to place. And at one point they end up stumbling on this abandoned ship, a spaceship. And it just so happens that there's a huge secret hidden on this ship that could very well get them killed. So 
I don't know, it sounds exciting. And I haven't read any hardcore sci-fi in a while. You know, I've read some apocalyptic and, and I just read Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, which is definitely sci-fi, but you know, it was kind of a shorter sci-fi. So I'm excited to read a big sci-fi series. I'm a little nervous, but I am excited. Spin number four. Eight. Oh, oh, that was a good. <laughs> oh, that was so good. <laughs> oh my god, it's a good thing I cleared off eight because <laughs> that would have been another book. <laughs> that was Mom's choice, man. Mom said clear off eight because I land on eight a lot, and she is brilliant because I would have just added another book. Okay, let's see where we are with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My choice again. Heck yeah. Okay, my choice romance. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay, I'm excited because <laughs> things are going well at the moment. <laughs> I was really excited. <laughs> So thank you so much, Mom, because I cleaned off that eight and it was perfect, perfect timing because then I did land on eight and I got my choice again and romance. And so what I realized as I was editing this is that I didn't implement my rule this second time. I didn't clean off any of the tallies for landing on my choice again. So for reasons you'll see soon, I can't clear off number three, but I will clear off number one because number one has four tallies on it. And so I run the risk of getting an extra spin on number one. And so I'm going to clear off number one now. And it means that next month I won't be in trouble on one. So for my choice romance, I actually am gonna continue the series I started last month, which I am loving and that is China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. This is in the Crazy Rich Asian series. And I know that we had kind of discussed this in the comments and I can definitely tell you that this is heavily literary fiction, but it's also romance. There is definitely romance in here. And so I'm gonna continue using it as a romance. Plus I want to read it. <laughs> I love the first book. I'm ready to move on to the next one. So I can't really tell you what the second book is about, but I can tell you that the first one is about this couple that are in love. They've been together for two years and they go to Singapore to meet his family and his family just happens to be a crazy rich Asian family, like absolute highest, highest level of wealth in Singapore. His girlfriend, Rachel, knows nothing about his family. And she discovers all this on the trip to Singapore. And it's devastating. There is a lot of prejudice within this group for people who are not from the right families, don't have the right amount of money, or of new money. If you're new money, you're not old money, you're also looked down upon. It's a fantastic series, reminiscent of Jane Austen, but today. All right, spin number five. Three, okay, three. Oh no. <laughs> I seem to only hit the same numbers all over and over and over again. So that's an extra spin. So now I'm up to seven spins. Jeez oh, Louise. Well, three's cleared out. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Oh, it's being nice to me. It's giving me buy new release, adult fiction, which is even more awesome because that gives me a lot of options. Seven spins. <laughs> and that's why I couldn't clear off number three in arrears because I was gonna land on it again, of course. <laughs> I like to land on the ones that have a lot of tallies on it. That's how I keep things interesting <laughs> or something. For this one, I was really excited though because I got to buy a new release, a book that's just recently come out and this one was adult fiction. So I was pretty open, literary fiction, historical fiction, contemporary fiction, whatever I felt like reading. And as you saw in the clips just right before this, I went with The Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. So this is a fictionalized story about JP Morgan's personal librarian, Bella de Costa Green, because of her relationship with JP Morgan. I, I mean like working relationship with JP Morgan. She was a very influential and powerful person in the art and book world. And 
this was fantastic for her because she was able to really create a name for herself. But unfortunately, the name that she has is not actually her own. And she is someone who is white passing. Because even though she comes from a black heritage, nobody really knows that. And they think that she comes from a Portuguese heritage, which explains her light brown skin. So this is a secret that she keeps in order to keep her place within society. And unfortunately, the world is racist and she has to make sure that nobody finds out what her real secret is. Spin number six. Five. We're definitely safe on five. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Book with pandemic, epidemic, or illness. Oh, interesting, okay. And that is Asian rep. Spin number six was a book about a pandemic, illness, or epidemic, and it had to have Asian rep. Now for this one, I'm also going to go with my new TBR rule, which means that I can use one or the other if I have a book I already plan on reading. And so for this one, I'm gonna go with a book with a pandemic, illness, or epidemic. And that's because for Lunar Along, I'm reading Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. And this is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles. In the first book, there is a pandemic about this virus called Letumosis. And I'm pretty sure that gets carried over into this book, but I looked very loosely because I didn't want to get spoiled for Cinder since I'm only halfway through that one. So I'm pretty sure this has a pandemic in it, but if it doesn't, sorry, <laughs> I'm still using this one. <laughs> spin number seven. Let's hope that this is my final spin. Four. Okay. Four is good. Four is fine. That's, wait, don't say anything yet, Amy. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Respin and move forward. Okay, nope, nope, that's, don't mark that down, Amy, because you gotta respin. Okay, let's spin again. Seven. Seven's okay. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Recommended by BookTube with Europe and Australian representation. All right, so our final spin, seven. Seven is doable. I can handle seven. So for this one, I'm going to go with a book that I'm planning on reading this month anyways, because it is the Down Memory Jane read-along book for this month, for September, and that is Northanger Abbey. So as far as the representation goes, this is Europe Australian rep because it is set in England and Jane Austen is from England. So it definitely counts for that. So as far as recommended by BookTube, I would say that Jane Austen is highly recommended by BookTube. Northanger Abbey is probably her least well-loved book, but there are people who love it. And I'm gonna go with Jane Austen was recommended. So she's definitely recommended by booktubers. This is a book that I need to read anyways. So if we just go with the whole Euro Aussie rep, then this works. So I'm really excited about reading this one, even though it's the least favorite one uh, people have of Jane Austen, because I'm currently reading The Mysteries of Udolpho. It's mentioned so much in Northanger Abbey. And then also I've heard that this is sort of Jane Austen's kind of spoof on Gothic novels. You know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be sort of her like culmination of all the different Gothic novels she was reading at the time. And mostly Mysteries of Udolpho, where the main character is Catherine. And she spends a few weeks in Bath where she falls in love with this man named Henry Tilney. And she ends up going back to Henry Tilney's home of Northanger Abbey. While she's there, she is like living in this Gothic novel in her mind. You know, she's read so many different Gothic novels, including Mysteries of Udolpho, that she expects there to be creepiness and intrigue and ghost stories and all this stuff. And she's really looking for something that probably isn't there. <laughs> but she freaks herself out and she's excited and she's trying to find the secrets of Northanger Abbey. And I'm excited to see what actually happens in this because <laughs> it sounds kind of ridiculous, but it sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm actually gonna be participating in two month long readathons in September. And I'll tell you, there were others that I wanted to participate in, but you can't have all the good readathons in one month, everybody. <laughs> I mean, they're all good. All readathons are good. I just meant like some of the big ones that everybody liked participating in all are happening this month. And I'm just kind of like, really? <laughs> Spread these out a little bit. So before I talk about those readathons, I want to go through a few challenges or buddy reads or things like that. So first we'll talk about buddy reads. So aside from my ongoing buddy reads of Mysteries of Udolpho and Mad Ship, I'm only adding one new buddy read this month. So I'm only going to be talking about one here. 
Leviathan Awakes by James S. A. Corey, which I'm going to be reading with James from James's Space. This will be our first time buddy reading, and I'm really excited about it. I can't wait for us to talk about this one, and I hope that I can stay on top of my buddy read because I haven't been such a good buddy read partner lately. Then for Buzzwordathon, the buzzword is dark. And so for that, I actually am picking a book, book that I've owned for a little while now that I've been really excited about because a lot of people have given it really good reviews, and that's Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I'm excited about this one. I don't know. I think I'm excited mostly because of the hype, because I've heard so many good things about it on BookTube. I didn't actually know anything about this when I picked it up. I just had been hearing so many things, and it the cover intrigued me. I'm not usually a cover by person, but apparently I have been intrigued by... <laughs> What's, what is what's happening to me? So this one is about a guy named Jason Dessen. And Jason Dessen wakes up to a life that he is unfamiliar with. He's normally a professor. He has a wife. He has a son. And after being kidnapped, he wakes up around a whole bunch of people that are in hazmat suits. He is not the same person he was before. In fact, they're telling him he's some kind of celebrated genius. And the people that he knew from his previous life are no longer there. So he's like, well, what the hell's going on? Because he remembers his old life. He doesn't know what this new life is. And he's trying to figure out which one is real. Was one just a dream? Was one my real life? And so it sounds fascinating and I'm hoping that it's good because otherwise I just picked it up for no good reason whatsoever because I actually didn't know what the synopsis was. <laughs> As I mentioned before, Lunar Lung is continuing on, and in this month, in September, we'll be reading Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. It's a bit of a longer one, so hopefully, I mean, these ones read really fast, so hopefully that's okay. And then the front page looks like that. These books are beautiful. So we'll be doing the mid-month reading sprints and the live show on Danielle's channel this time around. And I'll link all her information down below. I'm also going to link the Discord and the announcement video for the Lunar Along. And if you've not had a chance to see it, if you want to catch up with us, these books read really fast, so you can always catch up. Or if you have already read Cinder and you just want to read Scarlet and some of the other ones, join us. You can join us at any point. We are happy to have you. And we're having a lot of fun on our Discord. We're having some good conversations. It's very interesting. Finally, I wanted to mention that the X Book Club, which is hosted by Kim from Expedition Through Pages and Hannah from Hannah's Blog, is starting their next round, which is going to be about pirates. And I'm really excited about this round, except I've had a hard time being able to get the books in the last couple of rounds. <laughs> So I think the round before this round, I got one of the books read. And then this past round, I didn't get either of the books read. So the first book that they're going to be reading in September is Why We Love Pirates by Rebecca Simon. And for this one, I wasn't able to get the book at my library. So what I think I'm going to do is there's a podcast for this book. I'm going to listen to the podcast. It's an hour long podcast. And apparently Rebecca Simon on this podcast talks about most of the things she talks about in the book. So I'll link the podcast down below in case you're interested in finding out about that. And also if you're curious about X book club, it's a really cool book club and they pick really interesting books. So go ahead and check out the announcement videos below and check out Kim and Hannah's channels. I love them. I think they're fantastic. Hey friends, it's editing Amy here. And I am realizing as I'm getting to the end of this video that it's going to be too long for me to add the two TBRs that I have for my readathons next month. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a separate video and it'll come out either on the 31st or the 1st, so next week. And it'll be my TBR specifically for those readathons and I'll talk a little bit more about that and kind of what I plan on doing. And so if you're interested in hearing what I'll be reading for the Not Safe for Workathon and the Magical Readathon, stay tuned, keep an eye out for that and it'll be coming your way shortly. So that's everything that I'm gonna be doing in the month of September and I'm really excited about it. And I'll also be trying to finish my Trash My TBR books because at October 1st, I will be posting my next round of Trash My TBR. And I think, let's see, is there anything else? I've still got a lot of vlogs that I need to edit and get up there. I have a lot of video ideas that I need to have time to edit. So there's there's going to be a lot that's going to happen in September. I hope. We'll see. August was a bit of a busy one, so <laughs> I'm not sure. But stick around if you'd like to see Mag Dispense. I will be doing those at the end of this video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more of my TBRs because they're so much fun. I love doing them. And I actually have a playlist. If you haven't seen it, I got neighbors back there. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> and subscribe <laughs> so you can see me get lost in thought, uh, discrolling. <laughs>
<laughs> all over the place. Also, if you'd like to check out more of my TBR videos, I have a playlist. I will link it in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen with Magda Spins. She is looking okay like I was, except for on number four and number nine. So those are the two areas where she could be in trouble. So she's starting on TBR random number generator over here. And let's see where we're going to go with spin number one. Four. That adds a spin. <laughs> Jeez, Magda, you and I, uh, we don't have the best luck. One, two, three, four. And that is my choice, adult horror thriller mystery. And I don't know, Magda, if you want to do the wipe one of your tallies free or not. I'm doing it to help myself, but I know that you can read a lot more books than I can. So if you would like me to implement that rule for you, let me know when you comment about what your books are gonna be next month. And I will update that and I'll wipe one of your tallies clean. So close to the end, Magda. Okay, are you ready? Spin number two. Nine. <laughs> do, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember when I said four and nine were the two that we couldn't, <laughs> couldn't land on? Yeah, and I didn't wipe your tallies clean. Is this fair? Probably not. I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> that adds a spin, Magda. Oh no. <laughs> uh you gotta find some nicer friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. TBR vet. Why a fantasy? So why a fantasy that's been on your TBR list the longest? Spin number three. You're at the end. Okay, so we're at the end. Spin one through five to get most anticipated. Six through ten to get library recommends. So let's see what you're gonna get. Five, most anticipated. So this is a most anticipated book. And remember, as I said, for the very last square, it's whatever genre, whatever diversity rep you want. All you have to follow is the prompt. Okay, so Maggie's starting over again. We're gonna find out if she's going to college or if she's going to career. If we go career, she adds another spin. Four, okay, you're going to college. Starting at college, that means you'll be going this way. We're not adding a spin, but any spots that we land on in this whole path here have to be YA of some sort. So let's see what our actual spin number four is. 10. Wow, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Longest book on TBR, and that would be YA Other. Spin number five. Nine. Which you're safe on now because he, <laughs> we already got it last time around. One, two, and we're stuck at stop. We're gonna have to get a career card. Okay, so your career card. This one. An athlete. Okay, interesting, an athlete. So the book that you pick, which in this case is YA fantasy, but I think since we're in this section, it can be any YA you want it to be. But if you want to stick true to the game, it would be a YA fantasy that has some form of athlete in it. It can be in the title. It can be an athlete in the book. It can be something that makes you think of athletes. Whatever it is, you can be creative. Spin number six. Let's see if we can pass that stop sign. No, you're stuck at career card. <laughs> Okay, all right, let's try this again. Doctor, okay. In this case, it would be a YA horror thriller mystery that has something to do with the doctor. I think that could be easy. You could get like a creepy doctor book or something, but it has to be YA or it doesn't have to do with the doctor. Something having to do with health, medical, could be a pandemic, anything that has to do with a doctor or medicine in some way will work for this. What should be the last spin? Let's see first if we're getting past that stop sign. And you are, you're getting past the stop sign. So let's spin for our seventh and hopefully final spin. Two, one, two, book card. Let's see what we're gonna pull for book card. Quick cut pick. <laughs> 
Okay, as we did last month, I'm gonna just do a random number generator on your TBR for this one. For adult fantasy, that's a nice one to end on. Okay, so for this, I went to Magda's Goodreads account and I pulled up her books that she is looking forward to reading. And on her fantasy want to read list, there were 42 books. So then I went into a random number generator. I did one through 42 and the number that came up was 40. So I went back to her list, sorted it by 40 books on each page. And the book that came up was The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. So I've never read this, but I hope you enjoy it, Magda. So those are all the Magda spins. Uh, we both got seven spins. We're, we're both kind of like, having the same sort of luck these last couple of months. <laughs> it's really interesting to see how the game plays out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.